these examples ask us to solve some radical equations with a little bit more going on. So let's see. In part a we have square root of 2x minus 3 equals 3 minus x. Now note that the square root is already isolated. So that is a good sign. Right, you always have to make sure that the square root is isolated on one side of the equal sign before proceeding with these, otherwise you'll get all tangled up. Okay, so it's already isolated, that's good to go. To get rid of the square root, we need to square both sides. Right, square both sides like so. This gives us 2x minus 3 on the left equals 9 minus 6x plus x squared. Now, you may be asking, why not just 9 minus x squared here? Well, there's a rule when you're squaring a binomial. Anytime you have quantity a minus b squared, that equals a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Right, so it's really important that you remember this 2ab term all the way through these kinds of problems, these radical problems. Right, this shows up again and again and again. You want to have this 2ab term in there. So our 2ab term is right here. That's that negative 6x. It is not the case that the 2 just comes through to both these terms. Okay, onward we go. Anytime you see an x squared and an x and an equality, you want to get 0 on the other side of the equal sign. Since the x squared is already on the right, we'll work to get a 0 on the left. So let's subtract a 2x from both sides and add a 3 to both sides. That gives us x squared minus 8x plus 12. Okay, I rearranged a little bit too. Now we're ready to factor. So if we're, we're looking for factors of 12 that add to negative 8. Factors of 12 that add to negative 8, how about negative 6, negative 2? That does the trick. Now we set each one of these factors equal to 0 and solve. That gives us x equals 6, x equals 2. But remember, you must check your answers for radical equations. Right? These are radical equations. These things will throw you extraneous solutions, which means they're not solutions at all. It just seems like they are. So let's check to make sure these actually check out. We check in the original equation. So let's try x equals 6. If we plug in here, we get 2 times 6 is 12. Minus 3 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. Okay, but on the other side, that would be 3 minus 6, which is negative 3. That doesn't work, so this solution is out. We say that's an extraneous solution. We don't include it as part of our answer. Let's check x equals 2. All right, we're checking it into the same place. All right, we're checking it right in here. So 2 times 2 is 4, minus 3 is 1, square root of 1 is 1. On the right hand side, we have 3 minus 2, that's also 1. Check. So x equals 2 does work. All right, so one solution to that equation. Let's try b. For b we have x minus the square root of x minus 2 equals 4. First step with these kind of equations is always isolate the radical first. Alright, because these will get really sour really quick if you don't do that. One very important step. Okay, so let's see. I want to keep this radical positive so I'm going to add it to the right hand side and subtract 4 over to the left. Okay, so that will give x minus 4 equals rad x minus 2. Okay, I subtracted 4 from both sides and added the rad x minus 2. Next, to get rid of the square root, I'm going to square both sides. Square both sides. And again, I'm using this binomial squared formula. This comes in really handy for the, these kinds of problems. This gives x squared minus 8x plus 16 equals x minus 2. Now, anytime you see an x squared and an x, you want to get everything there to one side of the equal sign and a 0 on the other. So let's subtract an x and add a 2. x squared minus 9x plus 18 equals 0. Let's go ahead and factor this trinomial here. This is a quadratic. Well, 0, we have x and x. We need factors of 18 that add to negative 9. How about minus 6 and minus 3? 
Next, we set each one of these factors equal to zero and solve. This gives us x equals six and three. Remember to check our answers. So let's see, let's plug in six. Six minus the square root of six minus two, which is four, does that equal four? Well, yes it does. Six minus two is four, check. So six is good, how about three? Again, plugging in for x, we have three minus the square root of three minus two. Does that equal four? No, it does not. Three minus one does not equal four, that equals two. So three is out. That's okay, three is extraneous. That means it's not really a solution. We thought it was, but it's not. X equals six is our only solution here. We would say three is extraneous. Let's try C. For C, we have rad four minus x minus x plus two equals zero. All right, step one, always get the square root isolated on one side of the equal sign. So here I'm gonna add an x and subtract a two from the right hand side. That gives us rad four minus x equals x minus two. All right, we're starting to get the hang of this. We want to get rid of that square root, so we square both sides. So I'm going to square both sides, squared and squared. This gives 4 minus x equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. Again, I used that 2ab rule right there to get that negative 4x. Don't forget that. It's one of the most common mistakes on this kind of problem. All right, well, anytime we see an x squared and an x, we want to get zero on the other side of the equality. To get a zero on the left side of the equal, let's add x to the right hand side and subtract four. That gives us zero here equals x squared minus three x. Well, if we subtract four from four, that gives us zero. So we're left with just x squared minus three x. We can solve this. We factor out the greatest common factor, it happens to be x. That leaves us with x and x minus three. Then we set each one of these factors equal to zero. That gives x equals zero and x equals three. Okay, let's check these in the original equation. Let's start with x equals zero. If we plug in zero here for x, we'd get square root of four, which is two, minus zero, plus two. Well, two plus two is four, not equal zero. So x equals zero is out. That doesn't check out. And there's no guarantee that three will either. We could get no solution to these, and that happens too. So we still have to check three. Let's check it out. Square root of four minus three is square root of one, minus three plus two. Does that equal zero? Well, yes it does. One minus three plus two is indeed zero. That checks out. All right, so just one answer for this last one, x equals three.